Hi everyone, welcome back. If this is your first time visiting, my name is Melanie. How many of you loved to get hand-me-down clothes when you were growing up? I know I did. I lived in between two teenage girls. So of course they had the coolest clothes because I was still in middle school at the time and they would give me hand-me-downs. And I can remember coming home from school and that big bag of clothes was just sitting there and I would enjoy the rest of the evening just rummaging through all those clothes, trying them on. It was just fantastic. But not only do I love hand-me-down clothes, I also love hand-me-down decor. My husband and I are both originally from Pennsylvania. And when we were home for the Easter break, so many of the members from his family and mine gave me free decor. They gave me so much stuff. I have so many things to show you. They gave me vintage furniture, mid-century furniture. They gave me vintage Christmas decor. They gave me primitive decor. They gave me country decor. They gave me a few rustic pieces, primitive pieces, even a few things that I think would be classified as antique. And if you like this style of content, I really hope you'll give me a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button and become a member of my YouTube family. And it's completely free to you, but it helps my channel to grow. My husband's granny gave me these two mid-century end tables. She also gave me a coffee table, but we just didn't have enough room in our SUV to bring it back with us this time. But these end tables, my husband's uncle made over 50 years ago when he was still in high school. I really like the two-tone wood, and these have traveled through the family. First, they were my husband's great-grandma's. Then, after that, they went to Granny. Now, Granny no longer wanted them, so she gave them to us. My brother gave me this old vintage milk can, and I love it. Look at all of this chippiness on the top of this. This is perfect. I'm not touching this, you guys. There is no way I am trying to take this paint off. I'm not repainting it. I love it just like it is. When things are old, I don't want to bring them back to life, like give them a brand new look. No way. It's I like pieces because they're old. I don't want to make an old piece look new. This is fantastic. This color is, I couldn't have asked for a better Keller of a milk can. This style and this Keller suits my decorating perfectly. So I was looking this piece over trying to see or find if I could figure out how old it was. I tipped it over and I found the date of 1966, but that might be when it was painted. This gorgeous vintage lace tablecloth was my grandma's. My mom gave it to me and look at the detail of this. This is just so pretty. I never even knew my mom had this. She had it tucked away and we were talking when I was back visiting and she gave me this and I am, I'm just thrilled to have this that was my grandma's and it doesn't fit my table perfectly but that's okay because look when my husband made this table for me I had him make me these breadboards and it almost touches right to the tip of the breadboard so I don't mind that a tablecloth doesn't cover my table fully because I don't think it needs to. I kind of like that you can see a little bit of the beautiful wood that your table's made of. So that doesn't bother me at all. Check out this beautiful vintage tablecloth that my mother-in-law gave me. Beautiful, right? I love all of these bright colors. It just makes me so happy to look at it. And if you don't like having a small appearing tablecloth on your table, you can just fold it to make it appear like it's a table runner or just a focal point on your table. And I'm going to show you right here how all I did was I just folded this and it looks like a table runner. Pretty cool, right? Or you can just fold it into a square and use it as your focal point on your table. Either one of these styles looks fantastic. 
My mother-in-law also gave me these vintage tea towels. These are so pretty. Somebody actually took the time to do all of this embroidering by hand. Look at this detail, you guys. This is amazing. And I'm gonna show you the back. Look at that. The stitching didn't even come through the back. Whoever made these did a fantastic job. And I really have an appreciation for embroidery like this because my sister loved to cross stitch and she just did such a wonderful job. So I love pieces like this. And these are going to look fantastic hanging over my stove. My mother-in-law also gave me this embroidered pillowcase. So I'm not sure if I'm actually going to use this as a pillowcase because I only have the one, but this would make a great scarf for on a table, or I could tuck it into a basket. I could even fold this over and hang it like over my handle of my dishwasher or on my stove. You don't always have to use pieces like this, what they were actually intended for. Get creative. Think out of the box. Think of other ways that you could use something like this. But whoever made this also did a fantastic job. They did all of the needlepoint by hand and they also had to sew on the lace trim. And this is so pretty. Have you ever heard of Michelle from Pummel's Ventiquities? You got to check her out. What are you waiting for? This channel is fantastic. Michelle is a new friend of mine here on YouTube and she's very new to this and she is still a small channel and I would love to help Michelle out. Michelle does so much thrifting, antiquing, you name it, she does it. Estate sales, yard sales. She has three different booths. So, so she resells and she finds the most amazing things to sell in her booth. And she takes us along, shows us different things that are for sale in the stores. Plus she also shows us what she's reselling. She takes us and shows us her booths and it's just an awesome channel. And not only is her channel awesome, she is such a sweet girl. I just, I really love her channel so much. I can't say enough good things about her. So I'd really love to help Michelle out. And I'm going to link all of her important information below in my description box. So all you have to do is click the link. It'll take you right to her channel. So I hope that you'll stop over a visitor. Tell her Melanie said hi. My mama gave me this rocking chair. The rocking chair originally belonged to one of my brothers. And one year for Christmas, my mom and dad got my two brothers that are only a year apart. These, they, they got them both these rocking chairs because back then, you know, you had to get kids like a lot of the same things or they would argue. So they each got a rocking chair like this for Christmas. And through the years, my mom and I have passed this rocking chair back and forth. And my mom was no longer using this. So she knows that now I'm decorating in the primitive country style again. So she gave it back to me. And I am so happy to be able to decorate with this rocking chair again. I'm really loving vintage furniture, and my mother-in-law gave me this vintage chair. So about two years ago, my in-laws bought a new house, and with the house, there was this barn, and the previous owners had left a lot of stuff that they didn't want, and this was left at the house. And I have no idea exactly how old this is. I've been trying to do a little digging. I think it's probably from anywhere from the 1940s to the 1960s maybe, not really sure, maybe the 70s. But this is a really well-made chair. And it's really neat because the back on this is only like a lower lumbar like size height. It's not a full back on the chair. So I'm not even sure exactly what you call this style of a chair. All I know is that I really like it and I'm not planning to use it, but I am definitely going to decorate with this. I'm going to build a really pretty vignette on this. I think that'll look great. I bet some of you out there love to crochet and knit. 
Am I right? Check these out, you guys. These are fantastic. My mother-in-law gave these to me, and they were actually made for my mother and father-in-law by her aunt. Her aunt lived to be well into her 90s, and she loved to crochet, and she made both of these. She actually made, I'm sure, a lot of afghans over the years, but she did such a fantastic job on these color combinations. I love these. They look fantastic on my sofas. And honestly, these are like brand new. I really love decorating with the vintage dolls. I love adding them into my vignettes. I think they just look so country and cute. And my brother gave this to me. I think she's adorable. She's got her little country dress on and she looks really old fashioned. I just think she's adorable. Look at her little curls. And you don't even have to like put these on a chair or, you know, you can just put them on a shelf. They make great little shelf sitters. You can place them on a hutch. You can put little dolls like this almost anywhere. Even lay them on your bed. That looks super cute. How many of you are familiar with the Jewel Tea Man? Well, that was long before my time, but growing up, I heard so many stories from my mom and dad about the Jewel Tea Man. And the last time my mother-in-law was up to visit me, she had told me that she had a set of jewel tea man dishes that were her mom's, and she asked me if I wanted them. And I was like, absolutely, I will definitely take them. I think my mother-in-law had these stored in their attic. So I'm going to get these all washed up. I'm not even sure how many this is a service for, but there are a lot of beautiful pieces with this set. And I'm thinking right now that I will probably put these in my glass cupboards in my kitchen. I think that would look really nice. I don't intend to use these. These will definitely just be for display. Now that has a chip and I was looking around after I pulled this plate out and I actually found the chip. So I will glue that chip back on. Hopefully I can glue it on so that you can't notice that it was ever chipped and you can see the chip right down in there. I can't believe that the chip was actually right in the paper that easily that I could find it. So hopefully that'll be a nice, easy repair. My sweet mama, who's 84 years old, just made these for me, you guys. Yep, can you believe it? She made these for me right before Easter so that she could give these to me when I was home visiting. So I have a little story. So back when I had my first home back in 1998, my mom actually made a set for me. She gave me a white sheep and a black sheep. She made them for me. Her and her friend would get together and they would make these. My dad cut the wooden forms out for them and they did the rest of the work. So over the years, um, I don't know if I actually sold mine at a yard sale or gave it to Goodwill, but when I started decorating in this country primitive style again, I was so upset with myself that I got rid of them. And the one day my mom and I were talking and I brought up about the sheep. So my sweet mama went looking around and she found that she still had some of the forms left, even the wool, and she made these for me. Mama, you are so awesome. I love you so much. Thank you. My husband's granny also gave me this wooden bucket. So I don't know if this is actually a firkin. I don't know if it has to have the wooden handle to be a firkin, but this is a great little old wooden bucket. I think it's got a lot of charm and I can definitely incorporate this with my decorating. Look at the inside of this wooden bucket. You can definitely see its age. 
Granny also gave me these vintage Jello molds. I have no idea of the exact age, but Jello molds are great to just tuck inside of an old crock. You can place them on a baker's rack. You can also hang them on a wall. They would also be really cute attached to some gingham or even some twine, and then you could hang them. Check out this vintage Christmas decoration. My mother-in-law gave this to me. This is so sweet, you guys. I have no idea exactly how old it is. I tried to look up and see exactly what kind of information I could find, and I couldn't find a whole lot. There is one little piece missing right there, but that's okay. I think it's adorable anyway, and this even plays music. I'll let you listen. If you were wondering what the background noise was when I was playing that decoration, it was my dog eating her food. This sweet rooster pool toy my brother gave me. I love this. I think this is a great primitive country piece. And look, it actually does roll. I was given two vintage graders on this trip. Uh, this one my niece gave me. She actually picked it up at a yard sale for 10 cents. I think this one is a lot older than the one on the right that my mom gave me. The one that my niece got me was a Bromco. And the one that my mom gave me is a Bright Pride. I don't plan to use either of these for preparing food. These will both be incorporated in with my decorating. I think they would look really sweet just to add a little bit of gingham or even attach a vintage cookie cutter. I could tie a little vintage cookie cutter on with a little piece of gingham or twine. I think that would also look really cute. I really like this old mop bucket. My father-in-law gave this to me. This is definitely old. I have no idea exactly how old though for sure. I'm thinking it's probably from around the 1950s, 1960s. This is going to look fantastic out in my mudroom slash laundry room. But do you see how the inside is made with those rollers? I'm thinking that this would make a really good umbrella stand. I'm thinking outside the box, you guys, and I think that would really work good. Using it for umbrellas is a great way I can repurpose this vintage bucket. My mother-in-law gave these to me, and I have a little story to go with these. So my mom actually, many years ago, gave me a set of these. They were my grandma's. And at some point over the years, I just didn't have interest in them anymore. So I sold them, you guys. I sold them at a yard sale. And I have regretted that so badly. And I had asked my mom so many times over the years, I'm like, are you sure I didn't give them back to you? And she's like, no, you know, we, we sold them at a yard sale. So my mother-in-law would actually come to me and my mom's yard sales, you know, to support us. And when my mother-in-law showed me these and asked me if I wanted them, I was over the moon excited, you guys. And I asked my mother-in-law if by chance she purchased these at our yard sale. She wasn't 100% sure. She didn't think that she did, but she wasn't 100% sure. So you guys, I am hoping so badly that she actually did. And these were my grandma's. Let's take a peek inside this bag and see what other goodies my mother-in-law gave me. She also gave me these two vintage cookbooks. They're both from the 1950s, but one is a couple years older than the other one. I tell ya, my mother-in-law gives me almost as much stuff as my mama does. 
I love looking at vintage books, but I also love decorating with them. They're great to add to a bookshelf, a hutch, a vignette, and they make beautiful risers. I tell you, it felt like Christmas when I was home with all the stuff everyone gave me. I was so excited when my mother-in-law gave me this. It's an old iodine tincture container. This definitely has to be old. I'm thinking probably the early 1900s. I want to start collecting more vintage pieces like this because adding pieces like this into your vignettes or just into a little dish or a bowl. It looks so primitive. I love it. How many of you still like vintage vinyl records? These are super old and I tried looking for a date. There was no date on the sleeve or on the record itself. But my mother-in-law told me that this was actually a piece that was left at the house. And the lady that these were gifted to is well over 50 years old now. So, and if these were given to her as a child, these are definitely old. And when I was home, we actually tried these out to see if they still worked. And they do. They are warped for or from their age, but they, I was shocked that they still worked, but I don't plan to use these anyway. I just plan to decorate with them. I think these would look really cute, just tucked in with some of my other vintage decor pieces. I could tuck them on a shelf. I could tuck them into a basket. There are so many ways that I can decorate with these. Tucked inside here are two vintage Christmas salt and pepper shakers that my mother-in-law gave me. We have the Mr. and Mrs. Claus. I'm not sure of the age of these. I know the other set is dated. I have a feeling that this pair is also pretty similar in age, probably from the 1950s. These are in fantastic condition. The only thing they're missing is their little plugs at the bottom. But look at the detail of these. They are such a great vintage Christmas piece. This is the other set, and these are in fantastic condition. These angels are so beautiful, and they are very well detailed. These ones are marked on the bottom, 1959, and they are occupied Japan. This one is missing its cork in the bottom, but the other one does still have its original Quark. These are a really great vintage Christmas decoration. I am so happy to have these and I don't plan to use these. I will definitely only be decorating with these. How many of you love and collect vintage Pyrex? My mother-in-law gave me this and it's still in really good condition. The detailing is not faded at all. So there's very little wear from all of the years. And I actually have two other vintage Pyrex bowls that I found at Goodwill a couple years ago for only a few dollars each. So right now I'm thinking I'll probably either nest this one inside of those ones or I'll place it on another shelf. But I definitely want to display this with my other vintage Pyrex bowls. Do any of you know exactly what this was used for? I don't know if it was for gravy or maybe warming chocolate. It is silver and the marking on the bottom, I know it's hard to read, but it does say Italy. I definitely am not going to clean this silver. I love it when silver gets that tarnished patina. I just think it's so beautiful and I think it definitely makes it look more old. This is a great piece. I'll definitely be incorporating it with my decorating. I don't plan to use it, but if you know exactly what this is, please let me know. I forgot to mention that my mother-in-law gave that to me and she also gave me these two vintage measuring cups. There are markings on the bottom, but it's really hard for me to read even with my glasses. 
This large measuring cup was my mother-in-law's mom's, and this little cup was my mother-in-law's when she was a little girl. And my mother-in-law said she used to bang her cup on the table, so that explains how this cup got all of its dents. Well, that's it for today's video. I really hope I was able to inspire you and give you some ideas for how you can repurpose and reuse a few of those vintage antique pieces. And I just wanna also say thank you so much to my mom, my mother-in-law, my father-in-law, granny, and my brother. You guys are fantastic and I just, you guys mean the world to me. And I will see you all again very soon. See ya!